Welcome to the Hunter's Advantage Podcast, where a group of budget-minded hunters scour the woods for whitetail bucks and whatever other big game is in season. Tune in each week to hear the hilarious public and private land hunting stories and mistake-filled lessons learned. We believe that every hunt brings us closer to God and that we exist to share the good news. And now, your hosts, Christian Babcock and Jake Gaylord. Listen, guys, we wouldn't be able to do the podcast if it wasn't for you all. So we just want to say that you guys are greatly appreciated, and thank you for following along each week. And speaking of support, we are partnered with Out on a Limb Manufacturing, and I can tell you from firsthand experience, Matt and Chase are great down-to-earth guys, and they make some of the best saddle hunting products out there. Whether you're looking for a set of climbing sticks or a mobile, lightweight, hang-on tree stand, or maybe you're even a one-sticker, You mean tree Pilates? Yes, tree Pilates. If you've been to the grocery store or the gas station lately, you know that Uncle Joe is doing his absolute worst to take all your money. That's why we need hunting gear that lasts year after year. And trust me, I've been rocking the same out on a limb Shakar climbing sticks for four years and the Ridge Runner 2.0 saddle hunting platform for a few years as well. This gear is built to last. We can confidently say that out on a limb is the best bang for your buck. And it's the best gear if you want to deflate a big old buck. Make sure you use code HNTA15 at outonalimmfg.com for 15% off anything on their website. So if you can show them the same support that you guys show us, please go to outonalimmfg.com and use code HNTA15 for 15% off at checkout. Now let's get back to the podcast. Saw dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. I saw you doing that a little, a little oh, did you? down there. Yeah. Uh, I uh, every what's up, I everybody? Uh, welcome back to the Hunters Advantage podcast. Um, I've got, uh, what's it? Gate J Lord over there. Um, joining me. No. Yes. Um, Tin Foil Hat Man. That, so this is one of our live podcasts where we do live Q and A and this is one of the formats of the show. We also do regular podcasts with guests and then probably our personal favorite is our hunt talks that we get to do at deer camp um, or when we're all together. Mm-hmm. Those but are seasonal these, though. Those are very, very seasonal. But basically on this one, what we do is we do live Q and A and we just field questions and give you very subpar answers. So here we are. What's going on, Jake? First off, what do I do with my hands? They're watching. (laughs) They're watching. (laughs) Oh, shoot. Oh, you know, enjoying the 100 degree triple digit heat. Um, Yeah. I got my dog right here. He's only a 15 year old Jack Russell. So you can, I mean, you can tell he's blind and basically deaf. Probably hear him. But yeah, I love him. So that's what have you been up to? Dude, just uh, summer, uh, summer chore activities. I remember. Or not, not remember. I this weekend I was putting out uh, corn and a bunch of other stuff, corn cameras, messing with tree stands, all that sort of stuff. And uh, I just thought about making one of those inaugural Instagram posts where it's like, you got to put the work in right now mm. to benefit this season. And I decided few hunt, it. few hunt, but hardly any succeed. Yeah, few hunt. <laughs> yeah, exactly. something like that. Yeah, uh, we already got some stuff rolling in here. Um, let's greet a few of our, but before that, hold on, hold on. I heard you got stung by a wasp. Is that true? Oh yeah, I did. (laughs) Right on your bunghole or what? Oh, nice. Good one, huh? Nice. I got wrecked, dude. It was in my feeder. Mm. I killed probably 10 of his friends, but that's what you you get for uh, hunting over corn, man. I wasn't even hunting over it. I was just trying (laughs) to get, just trying to get it up on the lease and they wanted Uh... it. Uh, okay, let's greet some of these people. So, oh, wow. Jake, I'll let you take that last name. Uh, Dylan, give me a second. Oklahoma's 48th in education, so it's going to take me at least two minutes to read that. Dow- oh, Dylan Dalrymple. How did I do? I think that's pretty good. Dylan Dalrymple. Rimple. Yep. So that's sup, homies. What's up, man? What's up, dude? We got another one from uh, Nikki Boy Sixteen said, "What's up, guys? What's going on?" These are a few folks from YouTube. We got some folks from Instagram as well. Um, Eric, the host of Next Southeastern up? Bowhunter oh, yep. podcast, uh, said, "What's up, boys? Hope y'all been doing good and some awesome episodes lately." 
Thank you, brother. Appreciate that. Thank you, brother. I've been watching some of your episodes myself. So uh, you can no longer do this. I can, and I will. (laughs) His past does not define him. He's a stud. Uh, So Jesse Davis Midwest said, where are you guys at in OK? Jake, where are you at? Uh, Right in the butthole area. Um, Crackhead, capital of the nation. So about northeast Oklahoma. So in Bonita, to be specific. Well, he's at the spot with the world's largest McDonald's. And yeah, yeah. So you will know you'll know Vanita by when you go past the turnpike, you go through an overhead McDonald's inside. You'll be able to see a silhouette. Will Rogers waving to the people. That is what we're best known for. And the halfway houses. Got plenty of those. You got plenty of relatives at this. Um. (laughs) (laughs) They're now on. uh, What do you call that? Like food stamps, EBT and all that stuff. EBT. Yep. Yep. Uh, Dylan said spot on. Uh, Heck yeah. Jake, you nailed the name. You nailed it. Oh man. Yeah, dude. Summer is a uh, quickly, quickly fading out of our, out of our lives. It's, it's moving rapidly. And, uh, I know you don't have many deer chores to do because you're a public land warrior, but all of us are common folk. I wish, I wish I had deer chores to do. I could get mine done in like 30 minutes in the afternoon or in the morning. Like all I got to do is weed eat a stand or just kind of weed eat around where either the feeder is going to be or, you know, one of the stands. And then that's it. There ain't much I can do. That's not necessarily a bad thing either. I mean, just more public land time. I would say that you probably have about the same amount of work for your private as Carol does to get ready for his private, Mm. which is leverage the skills of his friends to get make sure everything's set up because he has to go to a birthday party this uh, weekend. Well, I will buy him out on his lease. I will say that publicly if if he wants to. There we go. Uh, I'll, and I'll be the great le- the greatest lease mate of all time. Well, it's already set up, so he could, can't be any worse than Carol. Um, Jesse Davis Midwest said, I'm not far out. I'm from Pittsburgh. Is it Pittsburgh, Kansas? Yeah, you're not yeah. far at all. I bought a bumper off uh, from a guy in Pittsburgh before. Uh, okay, here we go. We got Fun some fact. questions rolling in. Um, Sal record holder for the yeah longest name of podcast history. So Sal Mark St. Martin, the second said, Hey boys back again. Here's a real question for you. Be a hundred percent honest. You know, that's going to be a good one. Hard hitting questions out of the gate or game. If you had a chance to shoot a bow at a huge buck, but it was iffy shot branched in your way, maybe out of your range, quick moving buck, whatever, would you try it or take it or wait for an ethical shot? <laughs> This is such a bad one to for Jake. <laughs> I can answer public, for Jake pretty easily. Pub, public or private? It doesn't matter. Come on. Uh, it he does, said, though. He said, and I quote, be 100% honest. 100% honest. 100% honest. Gonna lie. And I'm not trying to give, give a cop out answer because everybody knows what I truly think. It depends, right? If it's on private and if I have them on, and again, I'd have to have them on camera consistently. If if, if if it was during the rut and it was a newbie that just showed up for the very first time and it was this exact situation, uh, what does Chris Stapleton say quite a bit? Uh, fire away. Hell, he wrote a song about it. Absolutely. So I would definitely shoot or shoot, man. And I would be kicking myself probably by not waiting, but I would definitely probably try to try to crack a shot off. I'll be honest if it's a, so it's all relative. If you're in the Midwest, um, maybe you're not going to do that at a Booner, but if I had like a once in a lifetime buck, probably, probably if it's, if it's a real a hundred percent, I'm, I'm being a hundred percent honest and I hate that about myself. I really (laughs) do. I wish I could give you a better answer, but I mean, if it was a hundred percent honest on like the buck of a lifetime. Yeah. But I've had a, to tell a very short story, we had a, a buck that um, came out of a bedding area that Jake almost got a shot at that in Kansas that ran by me. And I had him at 55 yards with um, basically the back half of his guts and his butt hanging off the back of a tree. And I, he was mid one forties. I could have shot him in the butt or in the guts, but I decided against that. So I have tested this on a very, very big buck. And I'm just telling you, it would take an absolute mega giant for me to my ethics to come into question. So, but you say that you say that he said last, be hundred percent honest. So I'm being honest with you. And last I think year, most people would do that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Last year when we were hunting our uh, public spot, we got absolutely pooped on for like the first four or five days. And then I think on that fifth day, I had a situation where it was pretty good out of range. 
his very first buck I see in all trip. I bumped them the night before trying to find a spot set up on it the next morning. I tried to get too close to it uh, that morning of instead of just picking the tree I originally picked out the evening before. And long story short, he comes walking to a, to a tree about 50 yards away. The does at 45, he's a little, he's, and I ranged a tree behind him that was like 55. So I just pinned him at 50. Well, I think if I would have waited and not shot that deer or shot at, at that deer in the situation that it possibly could have came around and gave me a better shot. So there's always that, but kind of going what you're going with that, that deer last year. Like I, I truly think with everything in my being, he was at over, you know, 145 or above, like pretty easy. And I like it wasn't a good situation. The doe was kind of on me. Uh, he was following the doe. I was on my weak side shot. Didn't step through my saddle platform to be able to shoot on my right on my weak side shot. I just tried to torque myself and let it let it fly. And it was a rush shot and a panic shot. And it it I the air didn't even land in the same county, dude. So I have I have did that and I have I have shot and I kick myself for it every day since. But at the same time, I don't regret it. I'd probably do the same exact thing in that same exact situation. Would say, shoot or shoot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. We got one here. Joshua Thomas said, hey, guys, if you had one tip for hunting public land to locate mature bucks, what would it be? What you got? Oh, man. I was hoping you would answer so you could give me a second. One tip for hunting public land to locate mature bucks. Uh, I'm going to give you an answer that I think uh, most people probably won't like, but I think if I if literally I could give you one tip, it'd be to run trail cameras. That mm -hmm. would be my number one tip. And if you can't run trail cameras, then I would say uh, probably do some do some postseason scouting. That'd probably be my other. My That's other good. Tip. But I mean, you always say the hardest part of finding big bucks is, or the hardest part about big bucks, or the hardest part of killing big bucks is finding them. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you know one's exist, no one exists, you can literally just draw a circle and say, okay, this is probably draw it really big, draw it mm -hmm. 200 acres and be like, this is probably his area and somewhere in the mix circles around it in every direction. And that'll help you kind of start to tighten, tighten the noose. But that's the one thing I would say is if you could afford it, I'd run a few, a few different trail cameras on public, but that might not be your scenario if you're a Kansas resident, but that's probably what I would say. Yeah. Also, we have a YouTube video on that. It's called the basics of hunting on just our trail camera strategy. I mean, it might, it might work for you. We don't really know where you're located, but so just take it with a grain of salt. Uh, yeah, that kind of deep dives into our trail cam strat. But I think the one piece of advice I would give would be the, uh, don't, especially on public, don't play it safe. Like you got to get in there and get on their chili. Cause more than likely if you're hunting public, it might just be a weekend thing. Uh, and so unless you have public just right out your back door, like if it, if you're there, if you're wasting your gas money and your time and away from your family, and let's say you've been running trail camera photos and there's, you know, some pretty good recent Intel saying that they're in there. I mean, don't play it safe. Get on the outskirts because it's public. As soon as you leave for the weekend, there might be a, a local that goes in there and hunts the spot too. So I think that's what I'm going to really implement this year is just really try to get in the chili and, and actually think you're hunting where they're at instead of just sitting in the stand like, Oh, I hope they come by here. Yeah. Be aggressive. That's a great, mm -hmm. that's a, yeah. They ain't going to kill themselves and they ain't yeah. going to offer up suicide. So, uh, we got a few people in from Instagram. PSC mobile hunter said he's going to pull out the three Oh eight. Ha ha. I think he was talking about shooting at a big buck with a bow. Oh, that's a good yeah. point. Uh, Cole Steven <laughs> said, what's up boys. What's up Cole. Um, we actually got a podcast with Cole uh, about, uh, taxidermy and deer processing up on the channel. So that's a fun one. Um, here we go. So Brian, uh, Dutcher, Dutcher said, he said, so Michigan changed its laws for hunting next year. The little ones can only kill a doe here in Michigan. Same with the elders. What's your guys thought on this? Yes. We battle high, uh, doe high to doe rate. I mean, you meant buck to doe ratio here mm -hmm. and they're only trying to make bigger bucks. Me having a child, I don't think this because I was able to kill a buck when I was young and now my boys can only shoot a doe for you season. That's interesting. What? Um, so, li so youth and elderly people cannot take a buck. Is that what it's saying? Uh, he's saying, no, he's saying during the youth season, a child can't shoot a buck. 
um, which is a, I don't know, that seems like a pretty interesting way to promote dough management. Seems like a better solution, maybe the uh, just just period. How come? How come there would maybe implement a rule that you have to shoot a doe before a buck instead of just saying, maybe. "Oh, no kids can." I mean, I don't know. Just don't just know during the, the youth season is what he's right. Saying. You're right, but still, I mean, youth season is what hell we look forward to when we were little. I still look forward to it. I'm 14 and a half. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yep, he's got identification. Crayon and five bucks. Uh, I mean, yeah, that my thoughts on that is that seems a little silly. I don't I don't really understand why the it's not really a benefit to a youth to get a place where you can shoot a season where you can shoot a gun if they're only allowed to shoot a doe. I mean, that's cool, but you can really you're not going to especially in a place with a high uh, a lot of does. You're not going to struggle to shoot a doe throughout the season. It seems like the whole point of the youth season is to make it easier for someone to shoot a buck before the pressure comes. Mm -hmm. So that's I don't what I would think, too. That doesn't sound very. I don't know. I don't like it. Yeah, I don't. I'm not a huge fan of that. Uh, Sal, Sal said, uh, "Appreciate the honesty. I'm only a few years into this, but the family I married into, most of them, really preach taking an ethical shot. Now we've had guys in the family freak out and shoot at massive bucks with a hope and a prayer, and end up wounding them and never see them again. Here's to hoping I never find myself in that situation. Hundred percent honesty from me. I'd let the shot pass and fight another day. I think that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's good." If that's no, how you I feel, mean, you should definitely stick to it. That's that's probably the smarter and more ethical thing to do. Absolutely, but I mean, the mind is a powerful thing. And yeah. if you if you're feeling a little bit of hopelessness, like oh, I'm never going to get this done, no matter how hard I try, and then an opportunity presents itself, it's like ah, I'll take my chances. But again, I'm young, dumb, and retarded. Yeah, you, you know the rest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Colby Kinley said, "How do y'all?" Hey, dude, how's it going? Um, Howdy. And we got a couple questions here from Instagram. Uh, Cole Stevens said, if you're hunting public ground rifle and the area is loaded with hunters, you shoot a buck slash an elk, it runs over the hill and is shot by another hunter. How do you handle this? I saw it happen last year in Colorado. That's interesting. I've heard of this happening many times, actually. Um, uh, how do you handle that situation, Jake? I would pray to God that I have it on film and be like, see, like, see it. I, I shot this deer too. See how, how see, it's the same exact one. This is a six by five as well. Yeah. And yeah, I don't know. That's, that'd be tough. I think if it was a, uh, yeah, anything with antlers, I mean, not that a doe is any less important, but anything with antlers, it would really, really upset me. And I think you would try to bargain and reason with the person. And also I'd probably try to identify where my shot was. Uh, and mm -hmm. where the other person shot was because I've heard situations where people actually kill the animal and it's death running and they shoot it again. Um, so if I thought I made a good uh, ethical shot that was going to put the animal down, I would definitely be willing to argue. But at the end of the day, it's like, are you going to come to blows with a guy over that? Maybe depends how big it is. I might, <laughs> I might, the game warden would definitely be involved. That's for sure. I'd let him I, sort it out. Yeah. That sucks though. That's a terrible situation. Yeah. Damn. That really sucks. Uh, Dylan said, Hey guys, when you guys are planning plots, are you planning a variety of food or sticking with one? And what are your thoughts on bigger or smaller plots? So um, I usually, I usually just leave my, leave my food out for like four seconds at a time and, and let it dispense. But that's, that's about as far as we go. We don't have a lot of food plotting knowledge. I've planted, uh, oats and, uh, rye and I've planted like a winter wheat mix before on very, very small kill plots at my grandparents' place. But we don't have ground that we can manage, to be honest with you. So we hunt public and then we run feeders on private. That's the that's the two things that we do. Um, he said, uh, Colby said, Kenny said, do a bunch of postseason scouting. Yeah, I think that's a good. I think it's a good, uh, good idea there. Um, that usually more. just turns into, you know, a, a little shed hunting piece. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um. PSE mobile hunter on Instagram said the youth hunt in Michigan, no more bucks being killed and they're voting on a one buck tag and earn a buck here. Are you able to pop these up? No, the Instagram doesn't come through. Oh, okay. Sadly. I don't know why. Um, yeah. Are going down to one buck. Yeah. I mean, there's pros and cons to that argument. <laughs> I think in Michigan, Michigan with how pressured it is, I think it needs to probably do something drastic like that then. Yeah, it sounds like there's a lot of deer in Michigan. That's never really been the problem. Um, 
Cole said, I was told that whoever puts the animal down owns it. I call BS. Yeah, that would piss me off. It's like, yeah, I was putting it down too, but it was running and bleeding out. <laughs> so I have a grandpa, uh, and he could be full of crap when, when saying this, but he's told me this story probably 150, 300 times, something like that. And so, but each time they're consistently, and after a while, you're like, okay, I want to check him. If there's even one thing off he says, then like, I want to call him out on it. It's going to be like, hey, you're lying. But nothing's been like, it's been consistent the whole time. And, uh, Apparently he was hunting a ranch. Uh, oh shoot. Uh, what's that ranch called? It doesn't exist now. That narrows it down. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's around, it, it's around here. It's around here, but, spur? uh, it, no, it ain't spur Drummond, Jerry? Drummond, Drummond ranch. Okay. You ever heard of that? I had to have. Okay. Well, it, it's a, it's a ranch around here. I think it's like a cattle farm or whatever, but he long ago, he used to have permission to hunt it. And one of the foreman's sons was hunting with them. They, they just did kind of deer drives. And he said there was this huge buck last day he's ever hunted in his life. Yep, Drummond. Uh, there's this huge buck. Like he said, one, you know, he, he, old timers don't really say like, oh, 160 inches, 170 inches. He was like, just like that. big, big old buck. He had like 13 points, something like that. And he said he shot it through the heart and it ran. And as it was running, uh, over the hill where the foreman's son was, he said he cracked off two more shots and he said it rolled down the hill and, mm -hmm. he, and he, and he got it. Well, when he got to it, he was like, Hey man, I appreciate you finishing this off for me. And he was like, Oh, what do you mean? He said, he said, I killed this deer. And he was like, uh, I mean, did you not hear my shot crack off? Like I just did, you know, I hit it right there. And he's like, sure enough, there was a bolt hole right there. And he said, Oh no. He said, uh, he said, I seen where you hit it. You, you hit it in the ass right there. He said, I hit it right there. And he said, so you hit it, you heart punched it like that, you know, with the pass through as it was tumbling down a hill. And he said, that's impressive as shit. <laughs> and long story short, the foreman's son kept it, but he said that like, he said he lost sleep over that deer. Like he said, it was the biggest deer he's ever seen to this date. And that would upset me. yeah, that was the last time he's ever, he's ever hunted. So that might drive a man to give up hunting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh man, that's wild. Uh, JW said, uh, what's going on, fellas? How did the traditional go draw go? How'd it go for you, Jake? Uh, well, I reached in the bag and I came out with nothing. So I got an extra preference point. I guess that's what I did get. Yeah. That's uh, same thing for me. I didn't get, I didn't draw nothing. Well, the... you see, we, we put in as a group, me, Christian and another one of our buddies and mm -hmm. our other buddy had like five points. I had three. And then Christian, of course, didn't have any. So I think he's the one that held us back from that, to be honest. I definitely did, but I did again. It's fine. I'd rather go as a group anyways. Uh, Sal said, um, Sal Mark, St. Martin the Second said, last thing before I leave, have you ever thought about switching to a crossbow? I noticed a lot of big name deer hunters have switched over. I mean, if if I was injured or something, I would definitely use one. You know, like whether you get older where or your shoulder or whatever the case may be, like if you if you're not able to pull back a vertical bow and you want to hunt by all means, like use use a crossbow. But I think anything short of that and even even kids, like if your kid isn't strong enough to pull back a bow, he can't you know, he can't hunt. And that's that's just kind of what, what I think about the whole ordeal. And if you're an able bodied man that can that can do that, it's like no. That's like that's like going to Walmart and riding around in one of those little motorized carts just because you don't want to just because you, you don't want to walk. You know what I you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. That uh and I'm I not mean, trying to offend anybody. That's just my opinion. Like take it as you will. Like it did I know it doesn't mean anything, but I'm not wrong. No, I don't think I'd I don't think I'd switch to a crossbow. I know we've kind of been talking um, a decent amount about not crossbows, but just, you know, the, what bow hunting is about recently. You know, we had a podcast with black widow that came out recently and it's or today and bow hunting is about close. I, and that's not, doesn't mean I won't shoot one far away, but the intimacy and the fun part about it is the, is the up closeness. And, you know, when you get rid of that, you lose a lot of the fun parts. So I, I don't think I would shoot a crossbow, uh, nor does it take as much skill or finesse or dedication. So no, I don't, I don't think so. I'm considering yeah. going the other direction with like a recurve. <laughs> <laughs> Make Not it more hard. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, I got a, I got a buddy that he, he doesn't primarily crossbow hunt, but he has one and it ain't even like a super nice one. It's just like one of the most basic cheapest models you can get. And it's an older one. And he said he can put that thing away in his closet and take it out anytime he wants. And he said he, he can literally drive quarters at like 90 to a hundred yards. And he was like, yeah, it's insane. And so you put that into the same category as a vertical bow or a, or like a compound or a traditional. It's like a traditional, like when we were there at the black widow thing, they had like this one little hallway that they made into like a, with the target at the end that people a could little range. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, step back and shoot. And it's like, I would put, I don't know how many holes in the wall just because I can't even hit the bag. And then same with the compound. Like if I try to step back to 35, 40 yards when I haven't shot a, a bow all summer, like it's not going to be the best. It's going to be a lot more accurate than the, than the trad bow, obviously, but it's still going to take some time to get my form right. Okay. The, I forgot these were my anchor points and versus like, all right, let's just hold it steady. Pull the trigger. Is my scope dialed? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To each their own. I don't care if you want to hunt the. Crowd. I mean, I don't either in the grand scheme yeah. of things, but it's 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 an opinion. Yep. Uh, Jeff Boo said said uh, best thing I can say is the obvious: get in the hard to reach places. The harder it is to get to, the better. I I don't completely agree with that. Uh, I think in in some places, yeah, absolutely. If it's extremely hammered, um, yeah, the hard to reach places can be better. And I think in general, they probably are, but not necessarily. I've killed a couple really good bucks 300 yards off the road. And I think in Kansas, I killed that other buck. Not a good one, but I killed a buck 250, 300 yards off the road. There's a lot of spots that people, I'm not going to say overlook, but everybody can't be everywhere at once. So there are places that you can kill a a deer, not in the freaking thickest place on the property. And in most of the times, like it's, it's all about diversity, I think. Right. Like if you have this, uh, native grass, like openness, like a, a clear cut select or cut. something. Yeah. Yeah. Or select cut. And then you have, you know, this one little draw that goes down and it has, you know, a thing of a thing of pines going down it. And then, you know, within maybe 400 yards of that, it has a little Oak flat or something like that. And you have all those little pieces of, of diversity in like that one little small area. And it doesn't get much human pressure. It's like that's typically where you find them. Now there's very there's variations of that, right? And some can be in those hard to hard to get places, which I agree. I'm sure there's some swamp donkeys hiding in in some places that we don't even want to go to. But at the For same sure. time, it's like yeah, you can very easily. I don't know. It's it's yes and no at the same time. It's the weird. deer are where they are. Yeah. Yeah. Whether that's what 2.6 miles back or 300 yards off the road, there's a lot of spots that don't look like a whole lot on on X. And there's a lot of spots that have a very tough barrier to entry to get off the road, whether you're busting through briars or doing something like that, that are a haven 150 yards off the road. And so, yeah, well, that last happened year, with my recurve hunt. Yeah. Last year, the spot I shot my, my book at it uh, on public, it was 150 yards from the road where we parked and to from the truck, because I had it on GoPro on my head from the truck, us getting out of the truck, walking down there with the stretcher and getting it and finding it and walking back up to it was seven minutes. Yeah. That took right. seven minutes. And yeah. I was like, wow, that recurve buck I shot on that draw hunt was uh, about 80 yards off the road. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice. So. Didn't that one run towards the road as well? Oh yeah, it did. It ran like yeah. two. Of, yeah, I was like, nice. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that is. Those are just two. You know, sample size, very small. Two sample sizes or two samples right there. But I don't know. The deer are where the deer are for sure. Yep. Uh, so on Instagram, a uh, basement decorator said, "Who wins in an arm wrestling match match between you and I?" Good. You already know my answer, dude. <laughs> Jake, Jake, as a man who has testosterone in his brain, can't say another man could beat him in an arm wrestling man match. At anything. I like I have a mindset where I can kick your ass in jujitsu and I've never <laughs> taken it in my life. I love your attitude. That's a great. Well, mindset. I'm just saying, like, I I, I 100 percent think I can. <laughs> That's awesome. Listen, I can scoot on my butt better than you by far. And faster. <laughs> and yeah. faster. Yep. Uh, Casey Pentagraph said, Jake, why don't you respond to my DMs? He's calling you out. 
I don't even know where my phone is. Oh, Abby did. Yeah, Abby did text me saying I need to check my Facebook messages. I will. I will check this. I'll check him after this. My apologies. All right, he, he will. He, he, has, he has promised it. Um. Okay. So Ryan Graves said uh, Texas has a first blood law. That I think he's talking about the who draws blood first. Yeah. Um. I think that's. I think that's a good law. I think there's certain circumstances where if somebody did hit one in the back ham and you put it down, that's a different scenario. But how often, be honest, are people going to shoot the same animal? It's pretty low. So well, Peyton and I almost did. True, but you guys were uh, you guys were coordinating hunting together, and that's a different situation when it's your friend. Right. So, right. um, I think that I think first blood's fine. That's probably a pretty good solution. Well, me and Peyton would just arm wrestle for it, and I could definitely beat him. So, yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, <laughs> Joshua Thomas said, "Thanks for the answers. I invested in some trail cameras this year, and have been placing them out, scouting more than I have in the past. I can't wait for deer season. Yeah, that's awesome." Trail cameras, uh, love them or hate them, they're awesome. They they work 24-7. They don't require little Debbies or any food to operate, just a couple they're, AA batteries. You were just not complaining about how much you spent on batteries, though. Uh, lithium. I'm not talking about oh, SD cameras. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Lithium batteries are the spawn of Satan. How much they cost. <laughs> yeah. If a president was to run on bringing the price of lithium down, I would probably vote for him. Man. That's no joke. You should tell all those kids working those lithium mines in a third world country to work harder. I guess. I don't know. He's paying you $2 an hour. What else could you want? Um, That's awful. I'll I know. Stop. It's brutal. Uh, JW said, how did y'all shed hunting go this year? Did you find any good ones? I found a deadhead. Find any good That's sheds? It. I don't think so. Nothing more, not, not more than like 10 inches, probably. 10 inches? I don't know. I like just dinks. Probably. Wow. I don't have any in here. Did you find any? Uh, you I shed, found you shed 100 your lease, didn't you? Yeah, I found one, one good one. Probably a, I don't know, mid 120s type of buck. He was broke up a little bit. Carol found a really good one, probably a mid 30s type of deer. Damn. Out of all the bucks that we, uh, we were shed hunting for, I mean, after we give up on our, on our lease and hunting it, uh, all those deer go to the wheat fields for the winter to eat because nobody's providing any food. So we typically don't hold a lot of sheds, which kind of sucks. Um, but no, I, we found a few, found a few deadheads. Uh, I found a buck that was like a forky with, and it was like a recent deadhead in March. And I was like, dang, I didn't realize Carol shot another one. And I sent him a Snapchat of it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. At the Hunter's Advantage, we live by the KISS slogan. You were not supposed to tell them that. No, I meant we like to keep it simple, stupid. All jokes aside, Exodus is the definition of keeping it simple. Let's say you aren't really sure what arrow setup you should run. The Exodus Arrow Builder will help you build the right arrows for your exact setup. Or if you don't have time to change those trail cam batteries in the dog days of summer, Exodus has a great selection of cell cameras and regular trail cameras. And if you pair them with one of their solar panels, you'll be set for a long while. I've shot over a dozen deer and a big old black bear in Saskatchewan with these arrows, and I trust them to fly right and get the job done. And they have something for everyone with the Exodus NIS micro diameter arrows or the Exodus MMTs. So if you want to save money on Exodus arrows, cell cameras, or anything else they got on their website, make sure to check out ExodusOutdoorGear.com and use code HA10 for 10% off. Once again, that's exodusoutdoorgear.com and make sure to use code HA10 for 10% off at checkout. Now let's get back to the podcast. Now, we didn't find a ton. You found a nice one on public. Nice. Uh, yeah. Head. Yeah. Just that deadhead. Yeah. I don't know. How, uh, didn't we tape that one out? It's like 118 or something. Yeah. This literally is about what your deadhead looked like. Mm, yeah, it did. Mine is that a little bit more chewed up than that. Yeah. It was... It, that deadhead was actually pretty cool because it was leaned up against a, a tree trunk, like smushed up against it. And the the like moss grew in the same pattern over the tree trunk as as it did the skull. And so it looked pretty cool. That's how you know it's been there a minute. Yeah. OK, uh, Tony. Burn I'm assuming Dude, that guy's got a nice beard and a nice set of hair on him. Uh, one buck and ARPs voted down in Michigan. Oh, okay. Interesting. APRs, what's that? 
couldn't tell you. <laughs> I really don't know. Uh, Tacy Peterson or Tacy TC Peterson said, uh, you should go on a brown bear hunt. That's on the list, man. It's all yeah, on the list. Awesome. Would if love you have to a go place, on a brown bear hunt. Or if you, if you just want to give me one for free, I will gladly go. Well, for a small price of about $30,000, we can go on a hunt like that. Those brown bear hunts are legit, especially with a bow. I think I saw, uh, I think it was Expedition or The Given Right, maybe was the TV show that, did you see that like world record brown bear that they shot in the chest at like, I think it was like 20 yards? Mm-hmm. It doesn't get much more intense than that. When did it come out? I do not know the score. It was 20 something inches, I think. Oh. Yeah, it was huge. Uh, JW said, I know you guys are all about arrow penetration. That's interesting. Uh, but with that said, what do y'all think about the G5 Mega Meat mechanical broadhead? Are we all about arrow penetration, Jake? I think it's just because uh, of the people we have on the podcast. It seems like we are, for we sure. Are. And in all honesty, yeah, I'd love to get a pass through every single time. What's it called? I'm going to Google it. G5 Mega Meat. Oh, you know what that is. Listen, I got short term and memory brutally lost. You know. The Mega Meat's like the, I think it's one of the most popular broadheads right now. Um, It's a three blade expandable oh, cut it. on contact. Oh, damn. Yeah. It's Those look kind of nice. They're very sharp, too. Do you have very, some? Very no. Uh, Jordan Schoffler got them. And uh, mm-hmm. a lot of the popular archery folks shoot them. Chris B shoots them. Um, yeah, there's a lot of huge two inch cut. Yeah, that, it's a nice looking broadhead. Huh. Uh, no. one of our one of our buddies at camp shot a deer with it and opened it up like a zipper. Like he shot, I think, like a hard quartering away shot, and like it it was brutal. Um it's a pretty good mechanical from what I've seen. Do you think it's better than like the white tail specials? Um, I don't particularly like the the non cut on contact aspect of the white tail specials. I don't like that they have to open to start cutting. Mm-hmm. Um but I would compare it if you got a pass through to like the whitetail special in terms of like yeah. how big of a cut it is. So those three blades, man, it's uh they're pretty nasty. I don't see a lot of people getting pass throughs with them, but if they work for you, that's sick. And they're very, they are very nice. If I was going to shoot a mechanical, I would consider shooting a G five mega meat. Oh, here you go. Yeah, I don't know. You so, take this one. Okay, so Dave Gaylord, I don't know who has a last name like that, but that's <laughs> that's weird. Uh, so there's an RV park here close to home. It is mainly gravel covered about it every evening. There are anywhere from 6 to 15 deer bedding there, including bucks. I know they are not being fed. What did you figure? What did you figure is the draw for them to be bedding there in large group? Uh, so you're saying there's no food or anything there? I'm, if there's bedding cover, there's probably food. Yeah, I would I would say that, yeah, they're, they're just getting their food from browse and then they're there because they, that's where they know they're not going to get shot at. It's probably the same same thing with any other housing addition around Grand Lake. You know what I mean? Like there's some giants over there by the coves, but no one can really hunt it. Yeah, I would assume that there's a there's good browse in that cover, especially if it's like thorny stuff. Um, that there's good browse and if it's you said it's bedding so it's obviously really good cover and then if it's in an RV park they're probably not they're probably not hunting so yeah. that's like kind of a trifecta there's probably food bedding and no pressure I think okay so I think he actually sent it sent me a video of this like last year sometime of the deer all just chilling there but I think it's the same the same concept of like around the coves and stuff like they got food to survive there and then they're not pressured so why leave yeah yeah um, so Judah, just Judah, Justin pomp. This is a, uh, one of the guys that's been listening for a while. I remember him on Instagram said, I'm watching about 20 bucks that I've been scouting and one has about eight inch brows and there's another about 10 good eight pointers. Judah, I think he's like 15 or something. He might even be younger than that. Sounds like you need a hunting partner to come kill some of those big eight <laughs> points for you. That's awesome though. I mean, this kid, he's been, uh, Checking in on lives for like three or four months now, and it seems like he's always seeing deer. So is it a, is that the book. Michigan hunter? Exactly. Yeah, he's from okay. Michigan. Okay. Yep. 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 
Yeah, he's a stud. I know. I know exactly. I know it's always him because he's holding the big bass in his profile picture every time. (laughs) Um, Hey, he likes big bass and he cannot lie. He cannot lie. Uh, Kyle Ford Outdoors said on Instagram, do you guys still have a code for Exodus? I love their broadheads. Yes, we do have a code for Exodus, but uh, it's not Exodus broadheads. It's Exodus Outdoor Gear. So they do trail cameras and uh, arrows. Yep. Different Exodus. What is it? It's Oh, okay. okay, Never mind. mind. Yeah, it's a different. But you want to eat HA10 for that Exodus. Subtle plug. Hey, you need arrows to shoot those broadheads. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, that's right. Get you some MMTs or some NISs. Uh, Michigan Harvester said, I found about 20 good bucks. Oh, that's him. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that's exactly who I was talking he, about. It, he asked it. Asked it. Sorry, dude. You're smarter than me and you're 12. 48. Um, <laughs> he he asked it on YouTube and Instagram, I guess. Nice. Thank you. Uh, Colby said, nice. at Mich- oh, He was adding him. I found 33 this year. Heck yeah, Colby. That's, that's good. Two big sets, 140 inch eight point set, and a 10 point in the mid 150s. Yeah. Damn. I would question you, but I'm watching your, looking at your profile picture here, and it looks like you do, in <laughs> fact, have a big, a big set. Uh, uh, nice, awesome. nice rack, man. Nice rack. Uh, Michigan Harvester said, I'm going out to Nebraska this year to bow hunt on private land, 11,000 acres. The property has mule deer and whitetails and has a few mountain lions recently. It's up in northeastern Nebraska. Dude. Here, that's, uh, that's, that's really awesome. You'll have a good good time out there. What I what I do like about Nebraska is you can. Uh, it's just a deer tag. It's not a mule deer or a white tail tag, Either and so or. you can kill whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty fun. Hey, we're going to Nebraska hopefully too. So we're going to be doing some Nebraska stuff. We are. Uh, Colby Kenny said, "I'm addicted to shed hunting." Well, they're in your profile picture, so I feel you. Yeah. We are I not addicted to shed hunting. I understand. I understand the addiction. It, w- the reason we're probably not addicted is because we suck at finding them. In all honesty, like we're not, we're not good at it. So typically, it's like, oh, well, to make ourselves feel better, we'll just go scout because we can't find any sheds. So that's typically what we do. Because <laughs> we could follow burns around, or or you know, jump from WMA to to uh, different public pieces, and like if the biologist there burns, like yeah, we could go do that, but we can't see them to save our life, so we just don't. It's also a six hour, seven hour can be eight to 10 hours for me to commute to freaking go look for a shed. And I'm like, well, excuses. I still found a lot this year for me. I found like 15. That's a lot for yeah. me. I went on Texas public and it's just a good excuse to go scouting in my mind. And I'm like, oh, I stepped on one. Nice. Cool. Uh, APR's antler point restrictions. See, oh yeah. Pennsylvania and Michigan people use APR. Uh, we don't have those down here. So not a familiar term. Uh, What's your view on, uh, on APR? I think it's a, just one other way to manage for As older a fellow age class Texan. But that's okay. But well, I wouldn't mean that in a bad way to be honest, I know, I know but that is kind good. of funny. Uh, but I think about like before last year, like all your like really nice bucks were really narrow racked. Right. Obviously, maybe not like obviously probably more than 13 inches, but still. So what what happens if they get to that restriction where it's like that's obviously a big mature buck, but it doesn't meet the requirements. I mean, um, one of the biggest I shot a that six by seven on the lease was uh he was 142 and seven eighths and he was 13 and a half inches wide. Perfect example. So. If you are in one, of, if so let's say you were hunting in Eastern Texas with a 13 inch antler restriction in that area, that buck would have been this far from illegal. So imagine shooting a one forties and being like, I hope he's legal, you know, yeah. there, and See, there's a lot and, of Harold's buck. Another great example that same yeah. year, he shot one that was 12 and a half inches wide. That was like one thirty, and it had 13 points. Um, I think that's one of the things it's like you manage for the whole, not the individual. Right. Yeah, but that still sucks because if you're if you're in a little nook and cranny that actually has good deer, or you finally found an area that has good deer, then you also got to battle that. It's like, man, I hope they grew what what the state says they they should, and it's like that's that's kind of crazy. How do they enforce it though? Too because you shoot a buck and you're like, oh, he's twelve actually. That's fine, you know. Yeah, I so what I, the... I think it's just for the I think it's just for those in betweener ages, which it has to be some statistical thing. I'm like, what's the average three-year-old and like what we're trying to get those deer to three and four and five. 
So I'm sure that's probably what it is. Which, to be honest with you, the bu- the widest buck I've ever shot was 19, and I've shot a, most of bucks that I shoot are in that 15 to 16 inch range. You know, if one's 17 inches, that's really wide. So yeah, it's, it's a nice buck. Don't shoot a lot of wide bucks. Uh, but on the antler point restriction side, um, I think that's a good thing, probably for the most part, especially in the Northeast when um, it's like I don't know what it is if it's three or four points on a side, but that's probably pretty good. I know it's worked good in PA. I know it's worked really good there. Yeah. Yeah. With Gary Alt. Um, Mission Arson, what do y'all think of the Beast Broadhead? Have you been looking at Josh Bomar stuff? Is that the one that like is supposed to evade bone and stuff? Yeah, bone evading hey, advanced Beast spring technology. That's what broadhead. it comes from. Yeah. That's I heard acronym. people talk about it, but I've never seen it. I've seen some of the holes and they are brutal. I mean, looks like you hit it's them an with a expandable. Hatchet. It's a two blade expandable. Oh, I see it has a spring in the bottom, and I, the whole idea with it is that it has the spring has enough tension to, if it encounters heavy bone, it flexes and goes back to 0.66 inches. I only know because I've watched some of the short videos about it. Mm. And then if it goes through soft tissue, the spring is uh, is strong enough to keep it flexed out while it's going through soft tissue. So let me ask you this. Is that spring durable? I wonder how durable that spring is to where, let's say if you practice with your broadheads to be like, how, like how reusable is that broadhead then? Let's say it works perfectly. How reusable is it though? Springs are springs wear out. That's what know, I mean. And so eventually I, I don't know what kind of spring it is though. I just see too many flaws with that. It's a it's a good looking broadhead to me. It looks like an NAP uh, Spitfire, like a two blade. Um, I, yeah, I mean I'm not against it, broadhead. and I think it's definitely a step in the right direction for sure, especially with expandables. But it, I, I I'm just too much of a skeptic, and it's just like, well, we'll see. If it worked how it how they're saying it works, it'd be like, okay, I'm in. Yeah, no, that's that's literally the step in the right direction to like feed out some of the I try it of an expandable for sure yeah I'd try it I'm not above it um hmm, that's interesting it's a neat design it's, I think it's a good idea uh mm-hmm. just seems strange with all the gravel oh yeah about the deer in the parking lot mm-hmm. deer are weird maybe they're like birds because birds will eat gravel to help digest the bugs and stuff in their stomach maybe let's go um JW said, I found a set that would roughly go high 170s while mushroom hunting. Never was big on shed hunting until now. Now I'm addicted. So <laughs> it only takes one then. He sent me a, p- a picture of these over Facebook Messenger. And when he sit, sent me the picture, my draw was on the jaw was on the floor. Like <laughs> they were like mega mass, uh, really good time length, like dark chocolate beauties. I mean, they were. Those were some of the prettiest sheds I'd ever seen. And it was, it looked fake. It looked stage where he sent me the picture. Was um, that on because, personal or? Uh, it was on per- my personal. Okay. Nice. And it was like, they were laid out like this, just like match right there. And I said, he said, yeah, I found them just like that. Just laying <laughs> there. See, um, that's, the picture that's the, yeah, that's what I was looking for. I was about to log on Facebook and see. That is, oh yeah, here it is. Here's the uh, just hold it up to the camera because I don't have my phone with me. Damn, aren't those awesome? Side by side, yeah. I'll get you a picture. So, here's the side. No, no, I've seen it. It's nice. Oh, wow. I I bet you, I bet you, you're hunting that every single day this upcoming season. Oh, I would be, wouldn't you? That'd be so cool. Yeah, heck, he's got a good one in his profile pic. Yeah, yeah, I know. I wonder where he's from. Some he's he's Oklahoma. I know that. Is he really? Yeah, Oklahoma. Huh. Uh, okay, let's get through some of these. So, uh, Devin Craig said, "Hey guys, I'm new to the filming industry, and I'm just currently on how would you? I'm just currently on how you would go about getting more followers, views, etc. I have a cool page, Whitetail Addicts. I just started." Hoping it expands. Either way, I plan on keeping posting videos with family and friends and just have fun with it. Uh, yeah, I've actually seen your page. Um, yeah, that name is very familiar. Um, so new to the film, how do you get more followers, views, etc.? What do you think, Jake? Mm, 
just like uh oh keith warren said today you just got to show your tits and you'll be good <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> no uh that's one way that is one way that's that's an effective way to end up on my for you page anyways uh jokes guys happily married but um i don't know I, see i think and me and christian talk about this quite a bit i think anyone can do what anyone else does right especially content side like yeah some people might be able to you know know how to edit or or it's it's about like hunting you just got to do it to figure it out right and but the key to that is is consistency i think anyone could do just even build a youtube page to 20k subs or whatever if they're consistent like we're not anything special but we got a youtube page of 20k we got a facebook of 50 or 60 and all that stuff and it's like we're not trust me we're not dirt on my boot but we were pretty damn consistent at jake's it. not a genius if you haven't found out yeah yeah i'm far from it my friend <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> uh consistency is a good one i think that's good what do you think uh, what what do you think genius uh as the group genius as jake calls me um no, I mean, hey, yeah. Some people are smart. Some people have the bronze and the looks. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, both. That's me. Uh, I, I mean, getting more followers and views. I, I would say just just doing stuff that you find interesting and then improving something every single time. That's what. Whether it's a uh, you know getting a better shot or making sure you're not saying certain words uh, like um or like you know just improving something every single time you're filming a video. That's a Mr. Beast uh, style of improvement. So that's probably what I would say. Just improve something every single time and just do the stuff that you want to do. Damn, you done. That bored me to tears. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, you're right. If you guys are anything like us, you love being in the deer woods and chasing big bucks. But there's another part of you that has that itch to chase other big game species. If you've ever dreamed of chasing black bear, mule deer, or moose, Alberta, Canada is the land of opportunity for these adventure style hunts. Each year, hundreds of first time visiting hunters from around the world come to Alberta for the options, quality, and accessibility that the land offers. With over 1,800 Boone and Crockett entries and endless possibilities of taking multiple species on a single trip, Alberta is truly a paradise for a big game hunter. This is why we partnered up with the Alberta Professional Outfitters Society. To check it out, go to apos.ab.ca and click find an outfitter. From there, you can browse all the different big game species and hunting styles that fit with what you want out of the hunt. Or you can send a free hunt inquiry through the follow the lead tool and the outfitters who have what you are looking for will reach out to you directly so make sure to check out apos.ab.ca to learn all about hunting in alberta and get connected to the right outfitter for you i mean that, that's something that we've done is every every dollar that we've made in this venture has gone into making things better like cameras yeah. and everything else so and then also, you're only going to be as good as you are at that time. You can only do as good as your skills. So, yeah, we, we learn like new stuff every single day. It's like, oh, we could probably do this a little bit better. You know, we could probably do this. And then three months later, it's like, what were we thinking? Why, why did we ever do that? I know. Uh, JW said, I found a set this year while, oh, he already said that one. Oh, I think he dropped it twice. That's my bad. Um, Brian Dutcher said, we have a four points on one side antler point restriction. Um, that's pretty good yeah but then again I, I that's also that. like any three-year-old I would, I would say yeah i mean it's gonna save your two-year-olds probably unless they uh are unless a nice eight point two years old. i think that's basically like the same thing different day though it's like yeah okay that might save your yearling to uh, that might say your save your spikes to your two-year-olds but that you're just prolonging the inevitable the next year it's like okay then that's that's a two that's a good two-year-old or an average three-year-old. Well, at least when he's three, he might have a chance to be a good one. If he's going to get yeah. shot at three, at least he's going to be good. Or smart enough. Yeah, that's true. Have a, yeah. have a whole season under his belt. Give him a chance. That's, that's true. Okay. Colby, See, uh, I'm, I'm the dumb one. Colby said, Sever does the same thing or half the price, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, I haven't looked into Sever. I know there are, they make a, a good quality broadhead, but I've never used them. So I don't know. I didn't know they had bone avoiding stuff. Um uh well that'll do it yeah he's talking about your your comment um 
Michigan Harvester said, I'm the lower peninsula 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 of Michigan. There are about 1 million deer, so I'm bound to find a bunch. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like it. It's funny though, because Michigan's always talking about the density of hunters and how many there are and how hard it is to hunt. But then simultaneously, they talk about how many deer there are. I think there's just not big deer. I think there's a ton of deer though. Yeah, buddy. Those are awesome antlers. Yeah. Yeah. Those ones for JW are awesome. Yeah, okay. Studs. Devin said, uh, I appreciate it. It's literally a dream of mine to film my hunts. I don't have a lot of money to put into it, and I don't come from a money background. So everything I do is literally just me grinding and doing what I can. I'm learning slowly. Thanks. If you guys give me a follow and like, I'd appreciate it. Love the podcast. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, sure we will. No worries. Well, I mean, yeah, I get you from the not coming from a money background. I didn't, but Jake did. So it's kind of been <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of been a you know an issue in our oh, friendship that is hilarious so that what's hilarious what's even worse Devin, is when one of you does and the other doesn't so think about how mm. hard that could be jake God. literally bought all of our camera equipment he pays for all the hunts is that right that's crazy that's new that, that's news to me <laughs> Hell, <laughs> he's just my couch cushions out. must be loaded son uh, yeah yeah well we understand. We understand. But I think, like, as for camera gear, like, you don't need a Sony A7 or whatever the heck we have. You don't need that. Like, our first, Christian's first ever camera took uh, tape. And, you know, we're, we're not that old. Okay. That's you all know, I'm saying. sucks about that tape camera is it was like five, probably seven, seven years ago. And Lauren shows it to me and gives it to me so excited. She's like, I, I got this filming equipment for you. You're going to be able to film your hunts. And I'm like, no way. And then I opened it up and it goes. <laughs> and I was like, this thing takes tapes. And she was like, I honestly had no idea. And I used it. I have a tape of me smashing a hog on public land, knocking the dust off of him on a tape somewhere. So yeah, you also have uh, that that AT&T buck recovery that didn't pan out on tape. That's on tape. You you recorded it on that camera. I remember that. Dude, I need to find that tape. Yeah. It was on there. I don't know if you pressed the record button or what, but yeah, that that was also on there. I've always wanted to ask you, but you got rid of it and I was like, I probably don't have it. So I never I never I, I think I do have the tape. I just don't have a way to read it. Oh, hmm. well. Hmm. One of these days we're gonna find Regardless. Something. But yeah, you see, slowly upgrade because then what you got like a cannon or something. Yeah, I've bought I bought so many cameras under five hundred dollars trying to upgrade. Yeah, I have one. Of I uh, I bought a Nikon D fifty two hundred uh, from Amazon, and it was like the little bundle kit. So you got like your little bag, two lenses, and the Nikon camera. And it was like eight or nine hundred bucks, and it was probably one of the most poor financial decisions I've ever made. Besides, I remember going, that. Besides going elk hunting in Colorado, because. Uh, I worked at a place around here. It's called GRDA over the summer. And at the end of it, uh, I shoot, I wasn't very good with money. So I was just like, well, I'll just, I had 1200 bucks hit the account for two weeks and then let's spend 900. Up. <laughs> and then literally I was going back to school that next week, like college, like, and I spent 900 of it. So I had 300 to like move the still water on. And I was like, awesome. <laughs> But I got a camera. <laughs> but I told myself, I was like, well, it's now or never. It's either I'm going to, I'm, I'm either going to get it or I'm literally going to wait till next summer to get it. So I'm just going to get it because, you know, your boy had those Cherokee thing that the, the Cherokees pay for most of his stuff. So yeah, film feels the good to be, thing. feels good to be a Redskin. The, uh, the <laughs> film and the hunts thing though, too, though, you could have gave me the camera that we have today. And I promise you it would not have made much better for the, a long time. You just have to go out there and film a ton and be terrible and figure it out along the way. That's it. Uh, JW said, thanks. I got a buddy that's mounting them for me now. Hopefully I can get him down this season and put them side by side. Dude, that'd be, that'd be so cool. I I've always wanted to find a sh uh, a set of sheds big enough to put in one of those uh, like fake European mounts, you know, uh, I know what you're talking about, like drill ins. I've been wanting to do that so bad. Um, oh, my God, we get some brain busters, dude. Timurin. Oh, no, we've he's been on here. here. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Uh, okay. 
Fat, Faffenberg. Faffenberger. Faffenberger. Tamarin you, Faffenberger. Tamarin Faffenberger. If if that's not right, I will be blown away because that was that was actually really good. That was a great pronunciation for, for me to say. Tamarin Faffenberger. Um, nice. y'all have any target deer on camera yet? Um, truthfully, man, we I got my first cell camera out uh two days ago. So I uh I don't have any target deer on camera. I have a few that I'm hoping for, but I don't have any on camera yet. I have one biggest buck I got in the last three days was about a, a mid one twenties, probably a three year old. So it's none for something. me. Still something. Not, dude, I I my camera work has been the last thing I did to my cameras was end the subscription in January. That's the last thing I, I did to my trail cameras. Granted, yeah. we, we probably got some that we didn't pick up on public that are still running. And hopefully we find them because I looked, I took inventory on our cameras and I have like eight. I have three. So yeah, we have, I guess, 10 missing out in the nice. wilderness somewhere or on the bright side, on the bright side. I went to Atwood to get some stuff for a mock scrape this weekend and there was, um, they have cameras for $29. Oh, really? So, well, those are going to be in my pocket. Maybe yeah, that's, that's not a bad, that's not a bad grab. No, not at all. Especially for the public. Land Did we ever, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Did we ever pick that one up by the pond? No, it's still there. So, okay. So yeah, we, I bet you we'll find half of those. Hope so. Yeah, me too. Uh, CD Stroker said, what's up boys on Instagram? What's up, man? Hello. Thanks for thanks for showing up. Uh, Devin Craig said, "Y'all probably think I'm dumb because of spell check crap on my phone." Uh, <laughs> been there, done that, brother. No, it's fine. You fit right I'm, in. Then I'm that guy on spell check that you literally send like seven or eight messages in a row trying to fix the word, and it keeps spell checking. And I'm like, by the end of it, want to throw my phone. Yeah, no, you're good. Yeah, you fit. So, right in. what was the uh, what was the push to try to make a mock scrape this year? Man, um, shot. So I was talking with Jake Ayers about this. In the last uh, three or four years, I've shot several really good bucks over feeders and kind of just sitting there twiddling your thumbs on your phone waiting for a buck to come in is not that exciting or fun. And so I've decided to start uh, utilizing like mock scrapes and travel routes and stuff at my leases and try to kill deer over more natural. This is just on private. Obviously, we don't do feed or anything on public. Um, but just trying to do it in a more natural, fun way. I really like to shoot one with my recurve um, on the ground in my ghillie or with my compound on the ground over a decoy with my ghillie. So I'm just trying to put in some mock scrapes so I have some places that at least I can check out for general areas of where a buck's coming through. Also, it's pretty good just to just to know like how just they work have, it. And yeah, yeah, yeah just to kind of have a little bit of experience on your belt. No, I like that. <laughs> have you <laughs> have you tried to have you gave any thought on like those rubbing posts or anything? Yeah, um, I've I've thought about a rubbing post. Uh, what I really want to do is a rope scrape. Mm -hmm. So taking a piece of rope, but you know, I'm I, you need to leave those out to weather a Let while and get the scent out of them. So I'll probably be too late for that this year. I might get started on that next year um, with rope scrapes. But rub and pull, all that stuff. Uh, I'm interested in all of it. I really want to try it all. So hopefully that's a that's in the cards. But um. Yeah, I got all that stuff set up this weekend. I'm not running any cameras over the scrapes yet, but I probably will as we get a little closer to season. Um, CD Stroker said, what part of Oklahoma do y'all hunt? I'm in Johnston County. Where's Johnston County? Nothing Google can't tell us. Johnston with a T? Yeah. Oh, okay, Oklahoma. he's down by – he's southern. Yeah. Oh, by Tishomingo. Yep. Gotcha. Oh, man, we hunt all over. Really? That's a cop-out answer, but it's true. No, we really do. Um, <laughs> the only place I don't hunt consistently is Northwest Oklahoma, and I've been out there too, but I just haven't hunted there for pronghorn recently. No, I've hunted there for deer. Too. Oh, and ceiling. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, we hunt all over though. Uh, Kyle Ford Outdoors said, uh, "Love my mock scrapes. Killed my biggest bow buck over a mock with a rope. That's awesome. Yeah." I'd love to shoot one over a freaking rope. I've always wondered if, if like some of the scrapes you've seen on public is either it depends how pressured hey. it is, right? Yeah, 
It's just like other people's scrapes that they tried because there was this one piece in Kansas that I walked by, walked into this little, it was like a seclu super secluded uh, bean field and it was surrounded by private and it was almost landlocked with this lake, but I ended up being able to skirt around on the edge of the lake. And along the way, there was obviously human sign, but there was more scrapes like size of car hoods that I walked by because I was like, I don't want to set up here. I want to get to this bean field to check it out because I know they're going to be on the bean field. But long story short, I don't know if someone made that just to try to deter people and make them stop there versus going all the way back. I don't know. I, I typically see when it's a fake mock or when it's a mock scrape on public, I usually see the tank stuff mm -hmm. like, um, but who's to say you didn't create a mock scrape and then just spray some piss in it and move right. on, you know, but you see a lot of the drippers and those sort of things on public. So I don't know. There's no, I guess there's no way to tell because especially because when you do a mock scrape, they end up using it. So it is a scrape at some point, but, I don't know. I think people do make a lot of them on public. Um, okay, so that's also the same spot I found found that corn on public, that corn and the blind. So here's I, your sign. I didn't hunt the spot anyways. Don't worry. Here's your sign. Uh, so Light Hounds said, "What's your local deer tracking dog?" We don't have a consistent deer tracking dog that we've used just here and there. Um. Do we want to give a shout out to those one for those one folks? We've used uh, Oak Hills oh, Bodark. Yeah, Oak Hills Bodark is what, and I think they have a couple other dogs. Um, we've used them one time. Um, I'm trying to think what other dogs I've used. I've used one in uh, Cade. I forget his last name. In Southwest Oklahoma, I used him once. Um, so we we don't use them a ton. I think I've. I tend to kill them. Christian likes to. You know, he loves the track, so I like why. tracking. It's part of the chase. <laughs> yeah. Um, so no, we use whoever's available. We don't we don't use them consistently enough. We use like I've used through two or three with friends over the years. Um, uh, they're cool though. Yeah, they're really cool to watch them work. CD Stroker said, "Let's hunt some public." There you go. Hey, hit us up if you're in, your, in the area. Drop up some, drop us some pins, and then uh, we might see you there. Yeah, uh, Kyle Ford. I noticed that uh, used to do some work with a pee company. Here's a little, here's a good little tip when putting pee directly on the ground, dump a little bit of water on the ground first so it doesn't just soak up in the summer heat. Yeah, I noticed that. I was putting some stuff out for mock scrapes this last weekend. And I mean, if you spray liquid on the dirt, it's gone in like five seconds. Yeah, because of the heat evaporation. Plus, they said the deer love the smell of mud. Don't know if that's true or not. I think that is true. If you Go till up a food plot or just turn over some dirt and don't plant anything and just leave and see if deer start walking through it. I like I think the smell of dirt. I think it's a nutrition thing, right? Because there's all those nutrients buried in the ground, you know, from the topsoil, right? And so I think it's just a nutritional thing. They're trying to browse all that, like, overturned stuff and and, and pick out of that. Yep. Because because the deer's nose knows what's nutritious or not and what, they're, what, what, they're, what their body is needing probably subconsciously. So, oh yeah, I, I think that that's what it is. Uh, okay, let's do a few more here. Uh, Tamarin said, "If you're not baiting, you're waiting." Well, amen, brother. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> you're right. Uh, veteran outdoorsman said, "Hi all." Hey, hey, thanks for he coming is, back, man. I've seen well you here several times. We appreciate it. Uh, well, if you guys got any other final questions, feel free to drop them on the comments wherever you're at. I don't think we're going to go on this thing too terribly longer. No. Also, uh, even for the people listening that, that might not be on the live right now, I got a question for you guys. Would you all be, do you think it's a good idea or not? Would you all be interested in us going to like a, like a deer, not a processing plant, but basically where they make all the, all the tinks pee, maybe not tinks specific, specifically, but where they get the pee from that they sell it in bottles at the convenience store. Would y'all be, be inclined to see something like that? Like the behind the scenes of that stuff, or I'm kind of curious to know, like, is it worth our time and effort to try to piece something like that together or not? So, yeah, 
either drop down in the comments or send us a DM because that's something we're really thinking about doing. We're trying to find these new kind of interesting stuff. We still find interesting, but little off the wall things to do when it's not hunting season that just something fun to do. Yeah. And we, we've been doing these kind of more um, travel style podcasts and events behind the brand stuff, like the stuff we did with black widow and plan on doing with other folks. So traveling and doing stuff is, is fun. So um cd stroger said yes and greg uh on instagram said i'm in on the p stuff yeah we're into okay um he said funny i see all i see all you guys that that i also run into before the echo and beast podcast oh nice well those are some those are some good podcasts so i am honored to be in that company that would be bad nice that is a nice bull yeah it is uh, Brian Dutcher said, yeah, that would be bad. Ace. Yeah. Well, that's good to know. That's good to know. Uh, CD Stroker said, do y'all duck hunt uh, every once in a while? <laughs> uh, if, if I don't have any deer good. tags left. Peyton yeah. would say that duck hunting is probably better than deer hunting, but hey, that's why he's not on here right now. And, and he'd be wrong. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're planning on doing these lives every other um, every other Monday. So count this as our you know kind of our first monday and we'll be back on july 29th so we're going to try to do them more typically till around 6 or 6 30 every other monday and we'll try to have them up on youtube where they're kind of set there as premiere uh where you can kind of tell when they're going to come and when we're going to be on but we also release a um a long form podcast typically with either us or a guest every monday at 6 a.m too so we're trying to get more scheduled and regimented yeah we got some good ones coming up too some really good ones. Yeah, I've got two or three already shot that are really good that we're working on editing right now. Um, but yeah, that's what uh that's kind of the schedule on the podcast. We're shooting for like six episodes a month and try to keep them coming your way. A mix of live and guests and us. So uh that's that's what we're up to. Uh Mike Williams said thanks, guys. Thank you, Mike. Thank you for everybody uh for sticking around and we appreciate it. We'll see you guys. We'll try to do these a little longer too. Typically not in just an hour. We'll try to go a couple hours, but this one is kind of ad hoc uh, and it's the first one. So yeah, yeah. we'll uh, try to get more regiment. So with that guys, uh, put down your phones, pick up your Bibles, um, share the gospel whenever you can. And uh, always know that Jesus loves you. Yeah. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye.